Can Deadpool manage an entire team of mercs? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down into the digestible ways to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel sex and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now this is the book Deadpool Mercs for the Money. It's a complete spin-off book from the main Deadpool book. If you watched our Deadpool book for Civil War II, that was where he actually broke up with these mercs. But this is the story that takes place right before it that sets up how come they were so mad at him in order for them to have that whole fight where they broke up with him. This also sets up the continuation of the storyline because immediately following this one, he gets a completely different group of mercs for money. And that's another story we're gonna tell you, but I felt like we had to tell you this one first. He had to understand Deadpool and his team's plight. Our story begins in Juarez, where Wade Wilson sits in a bar discussing his problems. He says that he thinks his crew might be turning against him. The person asks, has he tried maybe not being a jackass? Wade says that he's trying, he's really trying! But the more he tries, the more it makes him look like a jackass. Domino takes another drink, stating, Wow, you must have been trying really hard for years then. As the two go on, Wade pulls his gun out at the sound of the door opening, and he sees Massacre. Massacre tells Wade that they have their next mission. And Domino says, you know, pointing a gun at your friends isn't a way to earn you any additional points. As Wade heads out, Domino tells herself that it seems like he really is trying. He's definitely going to get himself killed. A short while later in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Wade and the Mercs all get ready to move in on their next target. Wade asks Fool Killer, what do they have? And he tells him that they have a highly trained professional acting like a creeper. Target's alone in the house. Everyone gets out of the van and Solo says that he didn't sign up to kidnap a child. And Wade says that their target is dangerous. Why else would she call herself a Negasonic Teenage Warhead? Inside the house, Ellie sits on her phone talking with her friend Cheryl when she sees something. Images of Fool Killer bursting in with his guns. And the second he does, she's already gone. As Ellie moves through the house, she continues to see visions of everyone trying to capture her. And just as they jump out, she disappears. You see, Negasonic Teenage Warhead, aka Ellie, she's a telepath with precognitive abilities and telekinetic detonation powers. So she kind of saw them all coming ahead of time. However, as she's attempting to vanish, she sees Wade and she sees one more vision. One of him telling her not to worry, he won't be leaving her behind. Now in the current time, because that was a flashback, he tells her, how about we just do it the easy way so nobody gets hurt? And she tells him, okay, she'll do it. Wade shouts, really? That's awesome. I totally knew cooler heads would prevail. Solo pulls Wade aside and asks, what the hell is really going on? There's something you're not telling us. Why would our client want this kid? Wade tells them by kid, he assumes that they mean kid who just kicked their collective butts. Wade then reminds them that their mission is to gather dangerous individuals who all fall into the radioactivity spectrum for monitoring and observation. So don't ask too many questions. He would also like to add that they need to stop being whiny baby men and start showing some respect for finding them these sweet gigs anyway. As they leave, Tara asks Ellie if maybe they should inform her parents and she tells them, it's all right, they don't need to tell them anything. As they drive off, Ellie's house begins to fade away. Over at the Umbral Dynamics drop point, Wade notices the men taking Ellie away are all suited up in hazmat suits, and his he did a bad thing sense begins to tingle. One of the workers tells Wade not to worry, she'll be in good hands, and here are the details on their next target. Wade tells everyone that it's time for them to move out, and as Ellie walks off, she begins to see another vision, one of her being strapped to a chair to be examined. The next mission begins with everyone over at Vietnam. As the team begins their preparations, Wade tells everyone to suit up if they feel they need to. Slapstick tells him, what's the point? Are we even gonna get more freakier? Solo grabs him by the shoulder and tells him that it's his call, but he won't be taking any chances. On their last op, they didn't pick up any radiation and they still managed to get their asses handed to them. Slapstick then says that if the suit's protecting against teenage girls, then maybe he'll wear one. Stingray jets off stating that he'll get into position and the rest of them head inside of the temple. Wade tells everyone to be quiet. They don't want to tip their guy off too soon. Element of surprise, you know? The room suddenly begins to glow green and Solo says, uh, I think we're a little late for that. Tara then adds that he's pretty sure Radioactive Man already knows that they're here. He then slams his fist down and everyone opens fire. While the bullets fly, Full Killer tells Slapstick to flank him while they get to cover. Slapstick springs in with his hammer shouting, Feet don't fail me now! Radioactive Man then grabs him and throws him into a stone pillar. While Slapstick screams, Feet, you failed me! Solo quickly runs over to ask if he's okay, and Slapstick says that his life, his entire existence is pain. As the fight goes on, suddenly Radioactive Man vanishes. Wade gives the order to move out, and while the mercs head out, Slapstick starts talking to himself and third person acting out a conversation as if Wade asked him if he's alright. 
He then turns to Solo and asks, Does Wade even care about us? If I were to die, Wade would just replace me with someone else who would work for cheaper. Or maybe it's time we replaced him! Soon, Terra's device begins to pick up radioactive signatures, and Radioactive Man tells him, You're not going anywhere with them. My soldiers will march and step on your bones as we journey to crush Western culture. As the soldiers begin to appear and fight, Wade tells him, Western culture is not that bad. The outlaw Josie Wales, Rio Bravo? Wade then leaps in to take Radioactive Man head on, and as he knocks Wade down, he tells him that his employers will not subject him to their torture. He then picks up Wade a second time, and Wade says, Hang on, I'm not done with my stop, drop, and rolling. And what do you mean by torture? They're trying to help you. Radioactive Man laughs, stating, Just like a capitalist, taking jobs without fully understanding. And then he releases a radioactive blast into Wade's face. Massacre jumps in to free him and makes sure that the fire doesn't spread too quickly, and Slastic crushes Wade's head with a mallet. Soon, Radioactive Man shouts that they have all stepped into his trap, and he begins grabbing each of the mercs. A voice calls out that he's sorry he's late, and Stingray swoops in. He holds out a rocket launcher, and Radioactive Man tells him, Your fancy weapons will do nothing against me. And Stingray tells him, Well, it's not a rocket launcher. It's a ram cannon, as in a radioactive absorbent material. The rocket fires, and as it hits, foam begins to cover and encase Radioactive Man. As the group starts to get back to their feet, Wade begins to think back to what Radioactive Man said. Umbral Dynamics are forces of evil and torture? Negasonic teenage warhead what has he done a few days later in west virginia wade and the mercs jump out of a van ready to move in on their next target stingray says that he's not picking up any radioactivity are they sure that this nuclo guy is here and wade says that the old dude at the gas can get out of here said that this is where nuclo hangs out and even if he's not he's pretty sure someone deserves an ass whooping wade bursts into the bar telling the bartender to give him a pint of whatever bacteria filled big swine he has on tap he's worked up a powerful thirst being generally terrific and give his companions whatever they want. Just make sure they're on separate taps. Wade then leans into the bartender, asking if he's seen a guy named Nuclo, one that can kind of glow in the dark. Heard he kicks his feet up here. A voice then says that he's been in and out of here for three months, and no one goes by that handle. He's never heard of anyone named Nuclo, but his pals call him Nuke. Solo tells everyone he knows this guy. He's like a super soldier gone wrong. Maybe their intel is a little shoddy. And Wade says that with a name like Nuke, he's bound to be radioactive. Nuke grabs Wade and soon the bar begins to burst into an all-out brawl. As Nuke holds up Wade, Wade says, You're right, we don't need to fight, but I want to. Wade holds his gun up to Nuke's head and says, Which of the 50 states to shoot first? And the gun goes off and Wade shouts, So long, Indiana! Nuke grabs his head stating that that was a mistake. One thing that he should know, these colors don't run. Nuke grabs Wade by the leg and starts beating him against the floor. The next day in Chicago, Wade and the Mercs set out to take down Ralph Roberts, Cobalt Man. During the fight, Stingray says that they need to be careful. Any mistake and there could be some serious casualties. Wade tells him not to worry, he just has to finish the guy quickly. They don't call him Half Minute Wade for nothing. As Cobalt Man blasts him away, Wade begins to realize that maybe the name was for another reason. Activating selective memory. Wade then takes out a grenade and Solo shouts that they can't use it here, they're civilians. So Wade tells him, grow up. How am I supposed to strike fear and explosive diarrhea into the hearts and butts of bad guys without a little? And a blast burns off Wade's hand and he shouts, See what you just did? You distracted me and now you have to live with the fact that I got my hand blown off by a guy named Ralph. Cobalt Man begins charging back up and suddenly he's shot in the back by a shadowy figure and drops to the ground. Wade says that's what he's talking about. But this mess that all you guys caused in my Mercs group, most of your money's gonna have to go back to fixing that. The next day, the Mercs all gather to discuss their next plan. How they may be better off without Deadpool. Over at the drop-off, Wade waits as Umbral Dynamics arrives for their pickup. On board of the helicopter, Machine Man Aaron asks, where's the rest of his team? And Wade tells him, you know, mercenaries, probably some meeting to unionize or something. Aaron leans in and whispers that he's been working undercover at Umbral Dynamics, and he needs to alert someone. The Avengers, the X-Men, anyone what they're attempting. They need to stop Umbral Dynamics. As Aaron walks off, Wade says, ah, sure. So he heads back to the theater to grab the mercs, and as he walks into the halls of his offices, he notices things are rather quiet. He looks at the gathering table and he realizes, huh, my mercs team ditched me. He turns back stating, I guess I need to get old school. I'm coming to bust you out, Negasonic, Cobalt Man, and big green guy who's not the Hulk, Lone Wolf style. Now this is the first arc for Deadpool Mercs of the Money, and it directly leads into the second arc, but since this one goes into the situation in which the Mercs for Money disband from Deadpool, I felt like we had to do these first three issues so you understand the situation with the Mercs for Money. This is probably one of the best Deadpool spinoffs I've read in a long time. I really am enjoying it, and I hope you guys are as well. So immediately following this, we're going to be doing the second one real soon, and if you want to know what happened and why the Mercs left, then go check out Deadpool Civil War 2. I'll link that down below so you can follow that story. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Story, and I'll see you guys next time right here.